welcome to our cool channel. We are M3 Movies on YouTube. We talk about movies and films and stuff. <clears throat> Hello! Hi. This is where you do the rest of the intro. Oh, okay. Welcome to M3 Movies. I'm no, I've Jack. never oh, done that. <laughs> <laughs> Brian. Okay. Um, yeah, it's me. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to M3 Movies. We're a movie podcast that talks about movies. Oh, we should talk about this too. Okay. Well, they can't see that. So. I know, but I'm showing you so that oh, you can write yeah, it on the yeah, sheet yeah, that yeah, we have yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah, I'll write it. And you guys Did will you see that? Uh, that was really cool. Oh, I yeah. I like that. Good for them. We'll get um, there. Yeah. We'll get there. Near Yahoo. the very end of movie news. I don't know how to phrase this. You'll remember it, right? I'll just put it. The thing. I'll remember. The thing. Got it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Jack Bryan and three movies. Talk what? about movies. Good lord, Brian. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm on IndieWire looking for stuff that we haven't talked about yet, that we haven't put in the thing yet, and I'm so excited. Do you want to save this for when we actually get to movie news? Yeah, but this is a trailer, so we can get to trailers. Ah, oh, dang. Are we going to have to pause it again? Yeah, to watch this trailer. God Mark Duplass damn. is in a movie. Mark Duplass <laughs> is starring in a buddy comedy with Ray Romano. I'm this is brilliant. S- but I'm scared to pause again. This is brilliant. Okay, then pause it now and we'll watch it now. All right, let's pause it. Bye-bye. We're back. And hey, would you look at that? It didn't delete everything that we have. That's good. So, yeah. We should have done that the first time. <laughs> Before. God, it still hurts me. It still hurts me to think of all that audio that we lost. Over an hour now. Over an what, hour. An hour, an hour 17? Yeah. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Um, good, good, good. Cool. Jack Bryan and three movies. The third time I've said that. It's probably going to be spoilers for movies if we talk about them. So, um, if we start talking about movies that you haven't seen, leave, I guess. Just be careful. Oh, yeah, be careful. Yeah. <laughs> Caution. Spoilers be here. I think you should listen to all of it anyway. Yeah. Give us money, I guess. I don't know. You're, Through you're our good. Patreon. You're good. <laughs> Patreon.com slash M3 movies. Which I will talk on more, but if you feel like looking that up while listening to our hashtag cast, uh, um, <laughs> then just go ahead, go to patreon.com slash m3movies and support us. Um, oh, I'm disconnected from Wi-Fi, so I can't do anything on the thing, which Good. means that we have to wait a bit until we can do the next section. So how's your day going, Bri? It's good. I'm looking at this list right now of yeah. every studio film directed by filmmakers of color set for release in 2019 and 2020. Oh, wow. Um, Lionsgate has a single one. I want you to guess who the director is. Jordan Peele. No. Because you're looking at the picture of us right now. Yeah. Yes. It's Lionsgate. Um, Chris Rock. No. Kevin Hart. Tyler Perry. It's a Medea movie. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Tyler <laughs> Perry's a Medea family funeral oh. comedy. Uh, James Bond 25. I just made a uh, Is Carrie Fukunaga uh, a person of color? Probably not a black color, but... I didn't... I thought he was white. That's why I'm just confused. Um, Is he Asian? He looks white. <coughs> Gross. But What's that's his... just mean to say, I guess. He was born in Oakland. Hmm. That's suspicious. Hey, that's just a suspicious. couple months after Star Wars came out, 1977. That's that's uh, suspicious. July 10th, Indie eight wire. days after I was born. Uh, Is Carrie Fukunaga Wars. and Carrie Joji Fukunaga a different person? I don't think they are. Hmm. Yeah, no, that guy's a director, they, blah, blah, blah. It whatever. says an American film director. Hmm. I'm going to move on, Brian. I'm kind of curious. Okay. Brian's curious, so we're going to stay here. His father was a third-generation Japanese-American. Oh, okay. So, not... Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move Let's on, see. yeah? Universal has Good by far Lord. the most. Wow. Oh, wow, yeah. A Night Shyamalan. Universal Jordan has Hill. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Which is I think most. you counted that wrong. No, you counted that right. Okay. okay. Good for you, Brian. Thank you. Finally got basic math right. God, you're stupid. By far the stupidest person I know. Okay. Probably never do anything at Harvard. <laughs> it's funny because Brian had a couple month long little, uh, what is it? Summer it's camp? A summer program. Summer camp 
Fuck it was your camp. So your parents can get rid of you? It wasn't what, you played games at, on the Harvard it was, campus? There were official courses. <laughs> <laughs> graduate students were in. Uh, my name is Brian Johnson, and I played, I don't know, tag. I played Angry Birds at, I played, <laughs> yeah. I played Angry Birds at Harvard for two <laughs> months. <laughs> I skipped all the classes and just played at Angry Birds. Yeah. Sat in my dorm. Played Angry Birds. Angry Birds Rio took me a solid three <laughs> weeks. That's depressing <laughs> because the blue macaw is now extinct, which I don't think it was the last time we did a podcast. This is the first time we've done a podcast in a well, while. The blue game. macaw is extinct. It is extinct. That's sad. <laughs> yeah. Why, why are we Rats. laughing at that? All right. Blue macaw. What are we talking about? Uh, did you finish the intro? Did we move on to the celebrity thing? No, we're still in the intro, because you wouldn't let me move on, Brian. What do you mean? I was just looking at the... Yeah, you were talking about people of color, and I hate it. That you were uh, ignoring me, I meant. Not that... Let's move on. <laughs> uh, let's go to celebrity talk. We, we gotta... Brian, we gotta figure out a better name for this. Uh, celeb chat. Uh, star segment. Uh, See, Jack I wanna... and Brian's talkie talk. <laughs> I want to, I want to move on, but I'm so enthralled uh, with what you think this should be named. So please keep going, keep going. Uh, Jack and Brian talk about famous people for a little bit. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, cool. Let's move on to Jack and Brian talk about famous people for a little bit. Uh, go jingle. We like the work of these certain celebrities, and so we're going to appreciate them and what they've done. That was a good jingle. Give me mm-hmm. just a second so I can change what this is called. Jack, would you like to introduce it, Brian? Uh, sure. Uh, so, uh, we put up the thing about ten minutes ago. Uh, yes. And we have a single vote that is not... Our, our own. own. <laughs> so, but it agreed with ours, so we didn't feel bad so, going yeah. forward with yeah, it. Yeah, so, yeah. thank you to uh, one Ramsey for uh, single handedly selecting who we're talking about today. Thank you, Rums. Uh, huh? Thank you, Rums. Rums. Uh, so, we are talking about, finally, as I have asked for weeks now. <laughs> okay, well, or like, like three weeks we've had the segment. Yeah. <laughs> To talk about Mahershala Ali, who beat out Viggo Mortensen. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it was a start. landslide. It was a landslide <laughs> of one to zero. Yeah. Do you um, want to start, Mahershala? No, you go for it. I don't really know much about this man's career. <sighs> Goodness me. Hey, kill yourself. Jesus. <laughs> well, he's an Oscar winner, first of all. Uh, he will probably be a two-time Oscar winner in about a month. Yeah. Uh... Oh, he's in he's Benjamin Button? A very talented. Hal- he's in, like, one scene of Benjamin Button. Oh, okay. What uh, scene? He's, like, the... He's, like, one of the people that finds him on their doorstep. He's, like, the male... Like, remember that couple finds Benjamin on their doorstep? Oh, yeah. He's the guy. He's also in, into the Spider-Verse. He is. He plays uh, the uncle. Yeah. Luke Cage. Moonlight. He's in Luke Cage. Moonlight. House of Cards. Mm-hmm. Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1. I did not know he was in those movies, because I haven't seen them. Just the last two, apparently. Not so bad far. ones. Predators. He was... Oh, God. <laughs> okay. But, the point is that in everything that he's in, he carries absolutely yeah. everything. Including The Curious Case of Benjamin Button? Including The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. The one Brad scene that he was overrated. <laughs> um... <laughs> Oh, very nice. We coughed at the same time. Everyone's is, gonna love that. <laughs> yeah, I have a cough right now, so I'm gonna be coughing throughout the entire thing. But, um, he's in only... This is kind of spoilers for Moonlight. He's only in the first third of Moonlight, uh, the little section, uh, when, uh, Chiron is a very young he boy. He dies, doesn't he? He does. I actually haven't seen it yet. Um, it's brilliant, and is you should it on, watch it. Is it on something? I don't know, probably. Okay, It's cool. brilliant, and you should watch it. All right, maybe. It's, like, maybe easily... Is it the best movie of the decade so far? Probably. He was born, fun fact, his birthday will be exactly a month from now. Um, wow, three Jesus. years before Star Wars came out. Jesus fuck. Wow. That's crazy. Um, but <laughs> he... Yes. He's in, only in a third of Moonlight and is the thing you... And it's only the first third of Moonlight. Yeah. And when you walk out, you're still thinking about him because he's that good. He carries that movie so much. Yeah, well, yeah. the movie's also brilliant in every other way as well, but he's just... 
a next level performance out of him. Uh, he's also he has a role in a very small movie that nobody has seen called Kicks, uh, but it's like one of those movies that I just really love that nobody knows about. Yeah. Um, and he's very great in that very different kind of role. Luke Cage. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys know I don't like those kinds of. <laughs> Shows or movies or whatever, but uh, from what I have watched, which is not all of it, he's by far the most enthralling part. And from what I've heard from people, uh, as soon as, again, spoilers, they kill off his character, uh, because he's a villain, as soon as he dies off, the show just gets worse, goes downhill. Right. Um, This year, he was in Green Book. Uh, He's very, very good in it. Uh, I don't personally quite get the Oscar buzz for it, but, I mean, he's still great. Uh, definitely one of the top five supporting actor performances of the year. Uh, just the way he delivers in all of his movies, like the, he has such a range of characters that he's so good at portraying. Like he's never the same person twice, but the, he always ingrains himself in them and he's always believable. It's never a false note. And he's in True Detective, which just started. True Detective season three. The premiere two episode thing just came out. I have not watched it yet, but I've heard that he is, he's like, the solo lead of it. Like usually yeah. there's two people. This one it's just him, and yeah, I mean, good things I've heard. So. Yeah. Uh, okay. Marshall. So then he's pretty much exclusively been in things that I haven't seen, uh, save Into the Spider Verse. Um, oh, he gives a very good voice performance. In that. He, it was actually good for him. Um. So cool. I can't really speak too much on him as a person or as an actor. So were you reading this headline while you're talking? Is that why you're laughing? No, no, I didn't you read, it, read actually. this headline. Out loud? <laughs> sure, if you want, I don't care. All right, Peter Farley's history of Peter Flash. Farrelly. Farrelly's. Oh, Brian. Keep going. Peter Farley's okay. history of flashing his penis as a joke resurfaces amid. Green Book Oscar buzz. That's pretty funny. I want to read the rest of this. Keep going. No, please don't read a whole article while we're trying to do a podcast. I'm listening. Brian. I'm listening. Talk. I just did my thing for like five minutes. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I fulfilled my quota for the month. I'm done. <laughs> um, yeah, so I can't really put too many words in about Sir Ali. He's not a sir. He hasn't been knighted. Yet. Well, um... Is he from the Queen's hometown? Is that where he's from? I don't know. <sighs> you suck. The Queen's hometown? Yeah. Great Britain! That's her hometown? Yeah. Jesus. Am I wrong? God, no, he's not from <laughs> Great Britain. <laughs> um. Is the Queen's hometown Britain? Jesus. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Let's move on to new releases. This Please, is gonna be quick, Lord. This is going to be a quick little new release, isn't it? Isn't it, Bri? I don't even know what it is, so yeah. Cool, let's go. Go jingle. New releases, new releases, new releases. They're out today. Or tomorrow, or next week, or maybe they're already out. Who's to say? Good jingle. Good, good jingle. Um, Glass. Oh, Glass is coming out this yeah, week. Yeah, and then that's it. So I totally we can forgot dwell on Glass this was coming out. A little bit. Um, not getting too schnazzy reviews. Yeah, but I'm still excited. Yeah? Um, I actually haven't seen Unbreakable, <clears throat> and I've only kind of seen Split. You only kind of seen Split? Yeah, we were watching it in film, but we didn't have to, and I was doing other things, so I didn't really pay attention to it. It's really good. Is it? I mean, Shyamalan's been on the rise. Shyamalan. Uh, but that being said, there's still very good reason not to trust the man. When's the wasn't when's, when's the last Airbender sequel coming out, huh? When's the hopefully the, never? The, what is it? What's the next one? Earth. Yeah. When's the Earth book happening? Hopefully never. Hopefully soon. Am I right? Give it to like who would direct that movie? I'll um, think about it. But um, who would direct that movie? Louis C.K. probably, right? <laughs> what a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just um, unnecessary comments. Okay. Um, 
What was I? That, I lost my train of thought. Glass. Glass. Uh, yeah, I've heard some mixed things. Uh, for sure. Not really mixed. Mostly, hey, this is pretty bad. I haven't heard, like, I've I've heard good things and bad things, definitely, for I, sure. Maybe it's just um, me when I'm looking at it. Metacritic. Is it, like, the yellow, like, a 54 or something, I think, last time I checked? It's got, like, 34% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was, like, a 54 the last time I checked. A 41. 41. Okay, that's pretty bad. Yeah. Um, which is unfortunate. Uh, Why? for sure. Why is that unfortunate, Brian? Because I like good movies. Uh, Okay. Yeah, but of the reviews, so we have tw- we have two positive reviews, 22 yeah. mixed reviews, and four negative reviews on Metacritic. So, so mostly mixed. Mostly mixed. Um, I think it's definitely going to be a movie that just depends on the audience goer, uh, yeah. whether or not it's something that they really enjoy. Um, I personally uh, love original, like, superhero action movies. Like, yeah. I think that they're just really fun, and they're something that we ha- we don't see very often. That's true. Um, so I'm definitely down for it. I have oh, not seen Unbreakable, so I'm going to have to watch that before I watch this movie, what obviously. What is a... Name a good superhero movie that wasn't based on a pre-existing... Chronicle. Chronicle? That's my go-to. Yeah? Chronicle is brilliant. What else, though? I mean, that's why I like them, because they're so rare. Unbreakable is the other one. All right. And then <laughs> Split and Glass, obviously. Right. Um, Incredibles. Okay. It's a good one. Okay, there um, it is. Yeah. I was, <laughs> see, I was asking because I had exist. something in the back of my mind. And they I exist, <laughs> but they're rare. Yeah. And I'm like, I appreciate the effort, even if it's uh, sure. didn't work out. Uh, I've heard bad things about the twist, which, you know, Ooh. Shyamalan, Shyamalan, you know. Is the twist going to be that M. Night Shyamalan is in it? I mean, he's probably going to be in it. He's in most I got I want to know what the twist is, though, actually. Then you keep talking. I'm going to look movie. it up real quick. I don't want to, though. Why? Um, Does it look too scary? Yeah, I'm scared. Um, no, yeah, just because I have scary movies, guys. Because I don't want to watch the two movies that lead up to it. Unbreakable, maybe, but Split doesn't seem for me. That's good. Thanks. Keep talking, Brian. Give me just a second here. But we're um, done with the segment. Ah, uh, then, ah, uh, Brian? God, really, really making my life more difficult. Uh, this is hard. I'm trying to, like, speak words while also reading and finding what I need to find. Uh, sh- IndieWire sh- gave sh- Glass a C-. minus. C-. minus. <coughs> wow. Wow. Let's... You want to move on? Yeah, I'm going to pause it so I can actually find the twist. And spoil it for everyone. <laughs> you know how people are mad that Brian Cranston is playing a disabled person. Yeah, I think that's a step too far. Eh. If I'm being totally honest, I really don't know how I feel about it right now. I'm just kind of like, okay, because I think that there should be more. You know how long I think people there should have be more won Oscars? disabled people. Like, I just think it's, I think it's just like. Well, it's interesting because I think there should be more disabled people that are being cast in roles. Um... But at the same time, I think all that movie really has going for it right now is, is that the it's Brian Cranston cast. Yeah, Kevin Hart and Brian Cranston. So I don't know, and it's not like it hasn't been done before. Where Eddie Redmayne won an Oscar people. for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dustin Hoffman won an Oscar for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's happened for years. I don't know why. Like now is the time that people are getting mad at it, especially for such an unimportant movie. I, don't know. I think people are getting untrustworthy of know, people just... that are just kind of good. There's gonna be something about Tom Hanks soon. I guarantee. <sighs> so I'm gonna kill something. Yeah, let's move on. Um, movie news. Go trailer. Movie news now. Yeah. All right, gang. Good, a uh, good. I paused it. Good pause. Good jingle. That's what it's called. Um. So what I found out about Glass, and you know, skip ahead thirty seconds if you haven't seen it. The twist is I don't know. See, I don't know. I <laughs> I, I couldn't find it. So glad yeah. we went. Glad I went to that length to whatever. Jason Reitman. <laughs> Jason Reitman to... I'm sorry, I found her... Can I, can I do this really yeah, fast? Yeah, go for it, Bray. Uh, this is a very quick little uh, headline <laughs> that I'm just going to read. 
the Church of Satan approves of Christian Bale using the devil for inspiration to play Dick Cheney, uh, which is hilarious, and I love that. I That's saw Vice. Good. I'll talk about Vice later because I saw it. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I'll talk about it. Have you later. seen it? No. Okay. Um, I want to read their tweet. So, uh, so they just quote tweeted one of the things that was talking about how yeah, he thinks Satan, Satan is for giving me inspiration. To us, Satan is a symbol of pride, liberty, and individualism, and it serves as an external metaphorical projection of our highest personal potential. As Mr. Bale's own talent and skill won him the award, this is fitting. Hail Christian! Hail Satan! <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's just like Satan's perfect, and since Mr. Bale won an award for playing someone like oh, so they're inspired trying to make, by they're him, they're trying to make Christian Bale into a Satanist. Hail Satan! It's so funny because his name is Christian. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they 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 said hail Christian, hail Satan, in their tweet. Oh, nice. They should have said hail Bale. Yes, they should they have also, said Hail Bale. They also replied to their own tweet and said, Also, Bale's Dark Knight era Batman is the best Batman ever. Hey, Church thanks, of Satan. Satan's commenting on thanks, fucking Church Batman. Church of Satan. <laughs> wow. I mean, respect. But yeah. So okay. there's our first piece of movie news, I guess. Yeah, okay, you can go on to the real news now. Um, Jason Reitman is going to direct a new Ghostbusters movie, which we'll touch on later because we got a new piece of information that we didn't know existed. Hmm? What with the trailer and all. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Is it what I think it's a sequel. It's Ghostbusters three. Ghostbusters three. Did they only make two Ghostbusters originally? I think so. I could have sworn that they made three. Well, maybe it was just two. Is it? Um. <coughs> was the second one any good? Huh? Was the second one any good? I haven't seen it. Okay, so people are calling. Just Ghostbusters from 2016, the Ghostbusters 3. Or at least that's what comes up when you look up Ghostbusters 3. Which is... So I guess that's, it, it's going to be different from that, I guess, maybe. Is it the same universe? or I don't know. Maybe they're just getting rid of that movie in the canon as a whole. I don't know. God only knows. Anyway, Ghostbusters 2, any good? Do you know? I have not seen it. No, apparently not. Uh, 56 on Metacritic, 53 Rotten Tomatoes. That's not terrible. It's half good. Wow. Half bad. Um, Josh Gad. Hunchback. Yeah, maybe Hunchback to play Notre Dame. Um, Notre Dame. I just said Notre Dame. <laughs> Notre Dame. <laughs> um, oh, it's I, it's Brian, do you actually I've see anywhere that he's going to be playing Quasimodo, or is that just your assumption? Um, so it said that he is the star. Which means Quasimodo. Does it? There are other main yes. characters. In... Name any of them. The Knight guy. What's his name? Mr. Knight. That's what I thought. Esmeralda. The Gargoyles. <laughs> he, I could actually see yeah, him playing the Gargoyles. Well be a gargoyle. <laughs> he could very well be a Gargoyle. Josh Gad is all three Gargoyles. Come but on. But he also like has that, you know, build for a Quasimodo. For a yeah, he has a hunchback. He looks like so Quasimodo. He'd make a good hunchback. Yeah, correct. Um, um, jinx. But, yeah, I mean, Alan Menken got, yeah, is doing the score. Yeah, That's yeah, good. Yeah. All right, good, so they're, good, good. I would assume that they're not going to use the original score from the original animated movie. They'll probably, uh, alter it. They'll have probably actually, take the have inspiration. Have you heard anything from the, um, Hunchback of Notre Dame musical? No. It's very good, actually. I like the story of the Hunchback. It's interesting to me. Um... And it's also interesting to me because Disney kind of watered it down for the animated movie. Yes. Um, I, it and it's did still seem, by far one of the darkest animated It did seem to be like... It, it did seem like it was going to be... It said, like, inspired not only by the animated movie, but also the original novel. And, right. So it might be darker than the animated yeah. film. As a lot of these seem to be. Like, Dumbo wonder, looks a lot yeah, darker than Dumbo. I wonder if they'll let it end... The way like, that the story actually ends. A lot of the movies you know seem a lot ends, darker, right? you know? Esmeralda dies. <laughs> <laughs> She's set on fire and dies from that. <laughs> um, what was that movie that came out recently that was a lot darker than it was? Like, uh... The Mowgli? Mowgli was much darker than the... Uh, that wasn't Disney, though, was it? I mean, they had to have sold the rights, at least. Well, yeah, but it wasn't through them. I don't think so. Yeah. 
Is this one going to be? Three but now? the Jungle Book was, and that's okay, also wait, much but darker. But they don't own the rights to the Jungle um, Book, the Hunchback, or the Jungle Book, because those were things that existed before, right? I don't that'd be know. like that'd be like someone else trying to make a Cinderella movie. They can do it, right? Sure. Oh, that's. I don't know how I don't these know, works. Actually. Yeah. I don't uh, know. Don't try to Google it, please. Because Disney. Oh, in the jungle. Oh, one. Probably not. Cinderella. It's a common misconception that Disney owns the Little Mermaid, Cinderella, Snow White, and Sleeping Beauty. Yet for years, Disney has maintained tight control over many fairy tale characters, fueling the misconception that Disney is their ultimate or only rights holder. That's from Forbes. So they don't own it, but they're like really pushing to make it that the Disney versions are like the only versions. That's interesting. That sounds like something Disney would do. Right? Which actually... Ooh, ooh, that was an awful sound, and I'm sorry that I made the, it. The Hunchback that remake came, is through Disney, though. You know what? Let's segue from that, Disney being awful, to <laughs> Disney being awful. <laughs> you, um, Who I out there... Disney. Let's just get a quick raise of hands from those listening at home. Who has seen the um, Star Wars... What is it? The... Star Wars oh theories, my god, uh, this! The Jesus. Vader fan film? The Vader fan film. I have not seen the Vader fan film. Is it good? It's alright. Um, okay. I think people needed a Star Wars fix, and that was the first thing that came out, so they were like, that's very good, but it's just kind of eh. It's a little very good. Um, anyway, there's a whole big controversy because the guy who was making it originally went to Disney slash Lucas Films. I watched the video, but I can't remember that he put out. Um, and asked if he could use their music in the film that he was making, the Vader short film. Um, and he said no. I think he asked if he could get money off of it, maybe? I don't know. And they said no. So he was like, oh, okay, that's fine. And hired a guy to compose it, like, compose the score for it. Um, and then Disney hit him with the copyright claim. Uh, what's it? Copyright? Oh, because there was apparently a piece in the music that sounded like the imperial march so they're like nope you stupid idiot can't do that and now they're running ads on the video and all the money is going to them which kind of (laughs) sucks um i don't blame the star wars section of disney though i just blame mickey mouse i blame mickey himself cunt (laughs) brian (laughs) um thoughts on this brian uh, no. I, I I don't have anything to say. I mean, uh, kind of a sucky I, thing. Not much really to I, talk it's about. It's sad. I mean, the guy put a lot of effort into it, obviously. Yeah. And that sucks. You know what? There was but, a... Um, I mean, what are you going to do, man? Re-release it without that bit of music that sounded like the Imperial March. Also works. Honestly, that's what I would do. <laughs> like... Fuck you. Um, let me see. There was another there's another short film. I sent it to the hashtag gang. I'm not in the gang, don't worry. Colleges. Um Star Wars Oh, you know what? I liked it. It's one of my liked videos because it was good and I overlooked. There is a, another Star Wars fan film that I thought was very good that deserved some praise because it was kind of getting overlooked. <coughs> Look up everyone at home right now, please. Uh, go to youtube.com. They're and... on youtube.com. Well, open another tab and go to YouTube.com because you're listening to us right now and look up Odyssey, a Star Wars story. Odyssey, a Star Wars story. It's like 12 minutes long, but it's really it's really good. It's good stuff. Um, I'm kind of overlooked, I think. So, Anyway, that's just me. That's just what I'm saying. Yeah. Speaking of Star Wars. <laughs> oh, gosh. Again. Um, this will be a quickie. Um, EA just announced that they're canceling the um, big open world Star Wars game that they're planning. The oh god, what was it called? Um, I'm thinking Son of Darkness right now, which is wrong because that's the rumors for what Episode Nine is going to be called. Um, it's not true. But the one about the I think it's like Fallen Order, uh, Star Wars mm-hmm. Fallen Order, maybe it's called. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Certainly but, possible. Yeah, it's good, I guess. EA is bad. One, EA is bad. Two, open world is bad. What? Name an open world game that's good. GTA. False. B- 
The open world part's not the good part. Spider Man. Spider Man open world? Yes. Very much so. How? Because you're swinging around New York. No, but I didn't know that it was. Yeah. You're swinging around New York? Yeah, but yes. Do you know what open world means? The freaking, like, hub, the main hub is a giant freaking world. No. Yeah. Open world means that you can keep going in one direction forever. That's so if Spider-Man I mean. was open world, it means that he can swing That's his way to Nebraska. Like that. That's Minecraft. what open world means. Yes, there you go. That's an open <laughs> world... Exactly. Uh, that's that's what right. open world means. Open like you know, like no means. man's sky. Yeah. That's open world, which because... is actually not awful. I see, but you're the only person that thinks that. You're stupid. GTA man. is an example. The 25 best open world games to play right now and completely figure out real life exists. Spider Man will not be on that um, list because it's by not. Games open radar. World. The real world. Blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. Uh, you really just don't know what the word open become, world means. Mad Max, Terraria, Just Cause Three. I, I don't know what that is. L.A. Noir, Saints Row 4, No Man's Sky, Watch Dogs 2. This is not, I mean, none of these, there are a couple of these games that go on for forever, but, like, there and aren't a lot of open games world that do means. that, Brian. Yes, there are. No, there aren't. It's like the craze in the gaming industry right now. Okay, then name other open world games. Like, Assassin's Creed has started doing it. And uh, yeah, but okay. it's all so it's like all the best fine to a specific map. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Like the action is. Have you played Assassin's Creed? L- the, it the, is the, all within a map, friend. Friend. <laughs> friend, the recent ones are open world. In video games, an open world is a virtual world in which the player can explore and approach objectives freely, as opposed to a world with more linear gameplay. While games have used open-world design since the 1980s, the implementation in Grand Theft Auto 3 set a standard that has been using since. So, I mean, it it just means, like, open roam. Or free roam, whatever. Breath of the Wild. But, like, Breath of the Wild is the example that I'm thinking of that, like, everyone loves. Yes. But, like, this... There... Maybe open-world is, like, the wrong terminology, but, like, what... I mean by this, but when I say open world, is like a game where the point of it is exploration of a map that seemingly does not end. But, For example, No Man's Sky. But that's so... Oh, God, that's so specific. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I can only think of two games that don't have, like, a limited map that's, like, it doesn't, designed It creative. doesn't matter. That's what Star Wars would have been. Star Wars... An open world Star Wars game would not have... Like it's not like I just set think on Jakku. Free roam. That's not what it means. I'm gonna kill you dead, Brian. I'm saying that they wouldn't call it open world. Yes, they would. No, they wouldn't. Yes, they Nobody would. was like open world Spider Man game. Yes, they were. Nobody said that. Open world This is so unimportant. S- sp- I know, but it I it has to be done. Spider Man. Open world Spider Man. <laughs> Yes, the Spider-Man that just came out is an action-adventure game to blah, 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 Give me a second. I swear to God. Control-F, open world. Critics called Spider-Man one of the best, blah, 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 though it felt it lacked innovation in its open world design. Sure, fine. Okay, I will concede to you. But Thank I, you. I'm telling you that an You open don't know world... how important this is to me. <laughs> <laughs> M3 movies. Podcast. It doesn't matter though, because uh, the glass, point is that Ghostbusters open world video games. <laughs> the open world <laughs> Star Wars game. In my head, when I hey, think, Hey Brian, did open you know Dan Star- Trachtenberg is going to be making an Uncharted movie? <laughs> <laughs> you never even let me finish my point about the no God, Star no. Wars game because I won that argument. Is that open I world would have been bad because generally open world is bad. That's whereas. <sighs> Linear gameplay is normally Brian this generally argument, better. <laughs> Please, this argument is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> open world is generally not as good. Okay. Generally, games that are open okay, world are not sure. as well done. All right, friend. All right, because just sh- okay. Normally, all right, that <laughs> Brian, freedom of exploration. Brian, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> that, Unbelievable. Because let it end. It's done. Oh, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is stupid, no, Brian. <laughs> You're the one that went on a ten minute thing. <laughs> And then I stopped it, and you kept it going. Because I'm trying to make the original <laughs> point that I was making. <laughs> that one I'm taking 30 seconds. That I already seconds. defeated? That I destroyed? No, you demolished. didn't! I was really hoping this would be a quick point. <laughs> My point is that they're not as interesting, because normally developers cannot make games that, like, where your own sense of discovery is actually fulfilling. Whereas normally games that just tell you what to do are better because it's just how you're supposed to play the game. I don't so an open world so. Star Wars game made by EA would have been a shit fire. Listen, man, we got different opinions. Can we leave it there? Jesus God. Good this... Don't Jesus God me. <coughs> you are the one who should be Jesus God right now, my friend. You just took eight minutes to search what open world fucking meant. <laughs> God. <laughs> because you were being a stupid idiot. Dan Trachtenberg making an Uncharted movie. Good. He made Tully. No, he didn't. You said he made Tully. He made 10 Cloverfield Lane. That's right. Jason Reitman made Tully. <laughs> that's the guy that's making the Ghostbusters movie. Jesus. Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, this is one of the more awful experiences of my life. Wait. Oh, no, never mind. Sorry. Never mind. We're good. West Side Story. They're using, like, not actors. I've never seen someone switch from like seething, boiling anger. I am boiling. To just I will kill like, you. <laughs> such serene calmness in a matter of seconds. Um, yeah, yeah, it's cool is... that they're not casting known people. Did you see like the video of like the girl that got cast as Maria? It was on Twitter. No. And it's a video of her doing the uh, like really loud part of Shallow. No. It was very good. Shallow. You know the song Shallow from Star Is Born? No. What? No. I still haven't seen Star Is Born. You don't know the song, though? Is that the one that you kept playing over and over again? Like Probably. a lunatic? Whoa, why is Soulja Boy trending? Soulja Boy says Drake copied his whole flow. Okay, this is not something we need to talk about. All right, cool. Um, and our last little bit of movie news today. Um, so those of you who listen to the podcast know that I met Rami Malek a um, couple weeks back. Um. <clears throat> Here, wait. Uh, listen to listen to her sing. Oh, okay. I want to do a microphone. Shush. Shush, um, Shush now. Anyway, I met Rami Malek in New York, just bumped into him, and lied to his face yes. uh, about seeing Bohemian Rhapsody, which I hadn't at the time. I have now. Uh, um, so we talked about that on the podcast. You can look through our Instagram story to find the exact clip. I'm not story. Our Instagram page to find the exact clip I'm talking about. Um, but I watched Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, and I looked back at the creepy picture that my mother took of me and Rami Malek and noticed that the girl that he was with was uh, <laughs> was Lucy Boynton, otherwise known as the girl who played his uh, wife in Bohemian Rhapsody. Rhapsody. Uh, so I complimented Rami Malek and said, you're great in Bohemian <laughs> Rhapsody. <laughs> I completely ignored his, this other girl who was also girl, in yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody. Which, which the, the news arose that he's now dating her so it was it was definitely her that he was with. Um, so Rami Malek knows I lied to him. And, and Lucy Boynton of... thinks you're a dick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> I like meet them again. I'm like, hey, Lucy hey, Boynton. You and she's gr- like, hey, you suck. I hey, hate you, you. asshole. <laughs> yeah. No, because she thinks that... <laughs> She thinks oh, that yeah, you no, actually, went up to... He may not know that I lied. He may just think that I'm a total douchebag. No, <laughs> yeah, she thinks that you <laughs> liked his performance and did not like hers. Well, well okay. That's yeah. what she thinks. <laughs> it would have been worse if I was like, hey, uh, f- uh, Freddie. Hey, Rami, great job in Bohemian. And then turned to her and... Eh, and then walked out. Jeez. It would have been worse that way. Oh, my God. She's Still good pretty though. awful. She was good. She was good in the movie. Hey Lucy Boynton, um, Rami's better. I'm sorry. No, well I lied. <laughs> I lied to your boyfriend. 
Um, and he's a dick. You know he was a hey, dick to you. I, I didn't mean to be a dick to you. You're great. <laughs> it's really funny though. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't mean for it to be. Um, perhaps one of the funniest things that ever happened to me though. So that's great. Um, let's move on from that embarrassment, Mister Robert. Sure. <laughs> Brian called Mr. Robot Mr. Robert. Ha <laughs> ha. Everyone point and laugh at Brian. Ouch! Brian, no! Brian, no! Brian! Wait, do that again? Ha <laughs> ha, I'm beating up Brian. I'm punching Brian repeatedly. Oh, okay. That... <laughs> um, yeah, let's go new trailers. Go jingle. trailers <sighs> that was a good jingle uh, far from home can we save it can we talk about the other one first yes so i'm gonna get mad about far from home so my i want to like my arm hurts now brian keep my demeanor for this for a you second it's a lot you hit my arm a lot brian <laughs> you asked me to do it again i did <laughs> Uh, Ghostbusters, they released a teaser for the third one, and that's... Oh, are we talking it. about it? Oh my god, Brian, yes. It took... It, it was not a trailer. I'm so excited for it. They showed the Base. car, yeah. and lightning. It's, it's nothing. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's pretty... <laughs> Why did you say that so, like, sincerely? Oh, no. <laughs> um, can we talk about the uh, other one? What's the other one called? Paddle? Paddleton. Paddleton. With, um... This movie's made for me. Mike. I feel like it's gonna be bad. Way. Hey, here's a fun fact about Ray Romano. Wait, what were you about to say? Did you go about... Were you about to say Mike Birbiglia? No. Er... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Mike it Birbiglia. Mike? It's, um... What's his name? Friend. Is it Mike? It's Mark. Mark Dufresne. <gasps> I You're the it. worst. <laughs> Duplass! There you go, Mark Duplass. Actually, it's a French name, so it would be Mark Duplass. <laughs> Mark Duplass. Maybe, like, my favorite, like, creative mind in Hollywood. I love Mark Duplass. What about Ryan Johnson? George Lucas? God. John Jesus. Williams? No, none of the above. But they're all involved in Star Wars. Ouch! J.J. <laughs> Abrams. I'm going to keep you doing it. <laughs> um, I love Mark Duplass. And Ray Romano, I was just talking to people about this the other day. The other day, because I was, uh, cause I watched The Big Sick again. Oh, very good. Uh, and I was talking about how the world needs more good rom coms and how the world needs more Ray Romano. Have uh, you ever seen um, Everybody Loves Raymond? I haven't, because I'm like worried it's gonna like the okay the guy who wrote that create that Phil like, Rosenthal is hilarious and a genius, and he does this show on which is on Netflix. Um, it's called Somebody Feed Phil. And or I'll have what Phil's having. They're two different shows that are exactly the same, <laughs> um, and it's just him traveling the world, being himself, and like eating good food. And it's legitimately one of the most enjoyable things I've ever watched. <laughs> and if I didn't already have a suggestion, I suggest that now because you brought up Ray Romano. <laughs> so go ahead and watch world... Somebody Feed Phil, or I'll have what Phil's having on Netflix. So, yeah. Very good. So the world needs more Ray Romano. Ray Romano, and the world needs more rom coms. And the, there's a rom com at South by Southwest that I'm excited for, which yeah. is not part of what we're talking about now. But it's Seth Rogen and Charlize Theron. We're, I'm down. Fun fact: I was born with Everybody Loves Raymond on TV, so I was born to Ray Romano yeah. probably screaming about my kid has AIDS. That's my Ray Romano impression. That was good. Thank you. No, but uh, that, those may have been the first words I ever heard. Like that, exactly like that. I. Uh, it's probably why. I I like the trailer. So well. <laughs> the trailer was, I can definitely see this movie being like run of the mill. Yeah. Like, I'm excited for unimportant really Netflix movie. Yeah. You know that like nobody really talks about after. See, two I was days. I was watching it and the, <coughs> the basic plot of the movie, is, from what I saw, is just two bros coping with the fact that one of them is gonna die soon. Yes. And you know, I mean, just the whole the whole trailer. You know that he's gonna die. There's like no going around that. And even just watching the trailer, I was like, oh, but I don't want him to. 
Yeah. So I'm excited for that because they're building a good relationship there that you can see like and right I love away. The, I love those two people so much. <laughs> so very much. <laughs> I love them so so very much. So I hope it's good. Yeah. Do you want to talk about Far From Home now? No, Velvet Buzzsaw. Have you seen this trailer? No, I haven't seen this trailer. It's the it's a Jake Gyllenhaal movie. God, Dish. are we gonna have to pause this again for a you third time? You didn't even tell me this was on here. Well, maybe if you looked at the actual sheet. Why? What do you mean, why? <laughs> I mean, like, why would I look at it if we're talking about what we're gonna? If like we because come up that's with it, why we have it. But we come up with it like five seconds before the thing starts. Yeah, it's so we don't forget about it, Brian. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Right. Let's pause I'm this. I it. guess. February first. Now we're gonna hear Brian's actual first reaction. Oh my god! Just... How did I not know about this? I don't this? know. Doesn't it look great? Dan Gilroy. Yeah. I love Dan Gilroy. Dibby Diggs. David Diggs is a god. Um, I, uh, <laughs> um, Natalia Dyer, I think her name is, from Stranger Things. Oh, is um, that her? Yeah. Wait, where? Uh, she's only in for like a couple of quick shots. Um, right there, you missed it. Her. Oh my god, Natalie Dyer! Yeah. Um, um, I doubt I'll watch it just because I'm me, but it looks... Oh my really, god, you're the worst. Really good. Yeah, I know, I am. Tony Collette... <laughs> I like David the way it's Diggs. done. I'm so excited for Delete David Diggs. David Diggs is so good. He's very that movie good. looks so good though. It yeah. looks so like weird and creepy, and Jake Gyllenhaal is gonna be amazing and not gonna get any like credit for anything. Nope, like usual. it's Netflix. Because uh, it's cause... Jake Gyllenhaal. Well, nobody's gonna talk about it either. It comes out February first and there's like no one cares. I know, but still, it looks good. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah. So watch, no watch. Absolutely watch. Absolutely watch. Right. Absolutely watch. I'll watch that February 1st. Then let's talk about this stupid bad thing. Uh, <laughs> hi, my name is Spider-Man. I swing where I see. I, I will cool. start by saying that there are parts of it that I like. Like what? I like, um, generally, which surprised me, I liked the action that I saw. Mm, felt uh, bland. Which is surprising to me because I usually don't like Marvel action. Listen, I'm not going to bash on this too much because it doesn't feel like it's trying to take itself too seriously or like it's, I don't know, being Infinity War. It just, it's so mediocre to me. Like the, the I thought the rock guy looked really good. <coughs> the water guy looked really good. I thought that Mysterio's fighting... Yeah. At the end of the trailer, looked really good. That looked really cool, and I'm excited to see what they do with that. Uh, very Doctor Strangey vibes, which is my kind of Marvel action. I think um, Flying Spider-Man looks awful. I mean, I don't remember it looking that bad. Um, it looked fine, I think. I'm pulling it up right now uh, so I can look see. at it while we speak of it. Polygon.com. Um, I do have definite problems with it. For sure. There he was. There who was? Oh, yeah. That looks fine. It, it, to you, maybe. Stupid. Idiot. That looks absolutely fine. I'm okay with that. Uh, the CG just looks bad Yeah, that also, looks fine. But it could just be because it's a trailer. There's one shot in it that is so bad. It's the one... Of With the all two the towers where one of them is burning. Uh oh. You know the, what I mean. Yeah. Uh yeah, Brian. Uh, it. I'll find <clears> it. <throat> I'll show you in a second. It's those towers. Where's the shot of just the... that rock guy looks good. Um, this one. This looks. If you have the trailer, uh, the timestamp is one forty three. Yeah. That looks. Awful. That's the worst thing I've seen in a Marvel movie in a long time. To me, at least. It yeah. looks like somebody painted it. Yeah, which is not really... What you want. Yeah. Um, so they did have moments of that, but not as many as, like... Black Panther. Black Panther or whatever. I just... Um, it can't just be me. The CG is definitely getting much worse. I mean, look at... Okay, look at this shot of Flying Spider-Man. Here comes... 136. He looks like he, he a looks cartoon fine. character. He no. looks like he's being drawn on. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he does. There's like no. Look at him jump. Just watch, Brian. Watch for me. Uh, yeah, he looks fine. He does a little wiggle in midair. What do you mean he does a little wiggle? He, Where? He does a little. He does a little baby. A little. A little wiggle. 
Let me slow it down for you. Way, way slow. But no one at you home don't can watch see movies this. slow. Look at, look at, ready? Little jiggle. What? He does a little jiggle. What are you talking little about? Jiggle. Where? Right there. Why are we doing this? No one can see it. Little jiggle. Where? What are you I even talking so about? Much. It's just him jumping. <laughs> and it's dad. You let people move around when they jump, right? Like, they don't just, like, stand, like, oh, Brian. still. Oh, yes. Is that actually what you're talking about? No, Brian. I'm not talking. Oh, my God. He's moving up. Oh, Jesus. It doesn't Brian. look like anything. It looks bad. No, it, it looks, looks fine. The, okay. Just let me have this. The CG looks bad. Everything no, else, it whatever. The Brian. water guy looks cool. Brian. The rock guy is really well done. Cool doesn't mean good. No, that's fine. That's fine. It looks bad to me. That's perfectly fine. Just let... Brian. Brian. The fact that he Brian. only gets splashed a little Brian. bit. Splashed a little bit? Like, he gets, like, punched in the face by this Look water the guy. Gas. That gas looks fine. It's when it comes out of his hands that I hate. That gas looks that, bad. That, that looks totally fine. That looks like smoke. It's so cartoony. That looks terrible, because, like, he's just putting in so much more effort than it looks like it's taking. <laughs> smoke! Uh, but, like, this... This looks really cool. I love that. That's actually that like my really least cool. favorite shot. That stuff looks really cool. Um, we're, by that, I mean like uh, Mysterio fighting at the end looks really cool. Okay, everything um, about this trailer I'm okay with. I don't really care too much. It's the CG that I have a hard time, and that's it. Just really, let me that's have like it. That's the stuff I don't care about at all. Like The, the part with like uh, Aunt May and uh, John Favreau's character, Like that's just unfunny and dumb. I honestly... Honestly, okay. Brian, I watched this, like, yesterday. I don't remember that part at all. This is the very beginning. I know. Okay, so wait. I want to sh- Look at the shirt he's wearing. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Uh, so when he's packing to go to this uh, trip or whatever, he's wearing a shirt. Where is it? There it is. He's wearing the shirt, like, with the Pythagorean theorem on it that says find X, and it's, like, circled, and, yeah. like, it says here it is. <clears throat> You know, that joke that you saw on, like, your grandpa's calendar because four years ago? Yeah. <laughs> and is worn by, like, math teachers uh-huh. Rest- only? Like, yeah. I thought it was law that only math teachers were allowed to... <laughs> like, that's, like, your, like... You know how doctors get, like, their white coats? That's, like, the white coat of math teachers. Yeah. Um, no teenager has ever worn that. Is he wearing an undershirt? Oh, my God. Is he's he? wearing an undershirt when he's wearing... In his pajamas... While wearing this Find X t-shirt, because he doesn't want to get it too sweaty, I guess. <laughs> Jesus. But it's just, like, the most lazy, like, costuming thing yeah. to me. It's just, like, guys, he's a nerd. <laughs> let's, put a, let's put the Pythagorean theorem on his shirt. How I can we that. properly show that this um, kid is a nerd? All right, let's see what else. Uh, he's still into Zendaya. Sure, I don't care. Um, why does Nick Fury hit his friend, who already knows that he's Spider-Man, in the neck with a tranquilizer dart? You may be talking about top secret shield stuff. I know, but I feel like he could just be like, bro, can you like go to another room real quick? Yeah, I'm Nick Fury. He's Spider-Man. If you say anything, I'll kill you. I mean, I guess. I like, don't know. This is the kind of intel Nick Fury should know. I just... Uh, and shooting him with a tranquilizer dart just seems unnecessary. I just blatantly don't care. Uh, let's see. You know what? That's what it is. I don't really care enough about this to argue it that much. All right. Here's Jake Gyllenhaal. Brian's going to, though. Uh, whew, that costume is not good. It's it's real bad. Uh, it's it's like too over the top to be worn by somebody that looks like Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, like like Looks- that kind of costume. Like I was talking to Jack about this earlier. Like it compares to Thor's costume, right? Like in terms of flashiness. Uh, even though this is probably even more flashy than that, but Thor has like the long flowing hair and like the hammer and like all this that goes along with it yeah. like he like is ingrained in that and then when he cuts his hair <clears throat> the costume also changes so it doesn't have like the flowing cape anymore it's yeah. like more like it's not as metal it's more it's, like leather that kind of stuff so it like yeah. changes with him so that it's always ingrained with the character right this looks like a middle aged man who like is going to comic con and made a uh, costume for it like it looks like spray painted gold like sure it just it doesn't match what jake gyllenhaal looks like like he looks ridiculous 
And then that's the whole thing. I, I don't just don't really it's fine. I don't really care. Uh, the other thing I was wondering is I I hope they address this in the movie, but yeah. um. Okay, so. Spider Man's a guy that saves New York City. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So this imagine being like going to Peter Parker's high school. Uh huh. Spider Man starts saving New York. You're like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's like kind of close to where I live. This is cool. Uh huh. You then go to DC. <laughs> And you're in trouble, and then Spider-Man saves you, and you're like, huh. Saves you specifically. Saves you specifically, yeah. You're like, huh. That's odd. That's lucky. Yeah. Good thing he decided to take a Must vacation here on a business did. trip, yeah. <laughs> and then you go back to New York, and he comes back to New York. Uh-huh. And then you go to Italy with the same group of people. Oh, my God. Spider-Man's and here And Spider-Man again. is now in Italy. Yeah. I think, I think he's, it's pretty easy to figure out. I think I could work out who Spider-Man was if I was in that situation. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't. There's a point where Mirko. I hope they address that. I hope Zendaya like is kind of just like, you're definitely Spider Man. They now probably will fuck. actually. I think that may be a reason that they took him to Europe too. Because I'm just like, that's. You'll figure it out. I think. Yeah. <laughs> like Spider Man is just following you around in particular, and you should figure um, that out. Let's move on. Yeah. Sure. To movies that we have seen. Let's talk about things that we do like. Yeah. Thur. Cool. Go jingle. Movies that we've watched. See anything good, Bri Bri? Superfly? I saw Vice. I didn't talk about that last time we were on the podcast, right? No. Okay. Let's move on to the next gen. <laughs> Wowzers. Yeah. Okay. Huh. What? So my thing about Vice. Yes. Uh, Christian Bale is brilliant. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Probably like my number three or four actor of the year. Wow. Uh, very, very, very good. Yeah. Uh, the makeup is very, very, very good. Sure, Everybody's sure. very, very, very good. All things we've heard, yeah. Uh, Amy Adams is phenomenal. How's... Um, uh, Steve Carell is brilliant and not being talked about at all. Sam Rockwell? Sam Rockwell's in like two scenes and he's oh, great really? in them. But he's not in very much of the movie at all. Yeah. And he's getting like... He's probably going to get an Oscar nomination for it, which I don't really understand. Yeah. Uh, especially when Steve Carell's right there doing three times the work and being at least twice as good. Yeah. Like, kind of bothers me, but whatever, it's fine. Um, so yeah, the movie is not as comedic as I thought it was going to be. Oh, really? I I was sure that it was going to be, like, yeah, purely comedy. Like, all of the promotional stuff that they were putting out there was It's not comedic. as comedic. Really? Because here's the thing, like, the comedy comes from how... Everybody around Dick Cheney is so exaggerated yeah. and, like, is so f- flamboyant is the wrong word, but, like, loud. Uh-huh. And Dick Cheney just kind of sits there. Dick Cheney is, like, very not charismatic yeah. as a person. And Christian Bale is not very charismatic as an actor in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's where the comedy comes from, and it works. Mm-hmm. Um, my main concern with the movie is I want to know how much of it is accurate. Uh-huh. Uh, and also that there were times where I was just like, I don't care, I guess. Right. Like, this movie definitely does not stand out to me as, like, one of the ten best movies of the year, for example. Okay. Um, but that be it's still an enjoyable experience. Yeah. Uh, there are parts of it that, like, there are certain, like, gags that they do that don't work at all for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's one where they start speaking in, like, Shakespearean soliloquy as like a joke like there's it's set up and punchline yeah. but like it just doesn't work for me um yeah I feel a, like apparently the... there were things in it that they cut out which I'm glad like they were gonna do like musical numbers oh wow <laughs> <laughs> uh for <laughs> jokes and they didn't do those uh that's probably good I missed the after credit scene I did not know there was an after credit scene oh really but I I didn't stay for it yeah um I read about what it was but I forgot and I was like I, I'm I didn't need to see it, but yeah, I mean it's funny overall and it's well done. It's mm-hmm. well put together. It's very Adam McKay. Yeah, like he... you feel like the Big Short vibes in right, there, like the right, way right. it's like edited together. the The way the narrator ties into it is really cool, actually. Mm-hmm. I liked that. Is it like uh, Moonrise Kingdom style? Narrator becomes character. No, no. The narrator, like, uh, do you want me to tell you? It's not maybe. that big a deal. 
Is it uh, Into the Woods style, where the narrator is eaten by a giant? Kind of. Okay. All right. <laughs> Do you want me to tell you? Sure. Okay, so the narrator... Spoilers. Um, yeah, spoilers for Vice, I guess. But yeah, go for it. So the narrator... This is going to be a spoiler here. ...is this random guy that you don't know anything about. You yeah. see him in many places. You see him at home with his son and his wife while he's narrating. You see him at war in Iraq when he's and he's narrating there. Mm-hmm. And then uh, towards the end of the movie, uh, Dick Cheney had a massive heart failure. Yeah. And uh, the narrator is on a jog and he's running. And he says... Now, you're probably wondering where I come into the story, and he gets hit by a car. Oh, shit. The narrator <laughs> is the person whose heart became Dick Cheney's new heart. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That's really interesting, actually. It I was very kind of funny. It was, it was funny. Yeah. It was very just unexpected. Yeah. I was like, this is so weird. I like this. <laughs> All right, because I didn't know. I honestly, like the amount I know about Dick Cheney, I didn't know really? he. I didn't know he if he was still alive or dead. Like you could tell me either, and I wouldn't have been you able to tell you. You didn't know Dick Cheney's still alive. I I'm, I didn't <laughs> know, and I I if you had yep. told me bef- if the movie had ended with him dying, I would have been like, oh, he's dead. Huh? Like I wouldn't have known. Like okay. you could have told me either way, I would have believed you. All right. Um, very much alive. I, I, I believe. had a hunch he was still alive, but yeah. I was like, oh, he died. I didn't know that. Only That's what the, I felt like when I was watching it. Only the good die young. <laughs> Correct. Because he's an awful, awful human he's being. An old man. <laughs> um, and is living forever. I loved the ending. Yeah. Uh, the ending was really cool. It was like a... It's not spoiling anything. It's like a testimony, basically, of him talking directly to the camera. Yeah. About like what he did. Uh, I really loved that. Again, I don't know if it's ever something Dick Cheney would say. Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. But I... I thought it was really good and well done yeah, and well think, acted I've, I've heard the big sort of oofy with it is that not a lot of people really know how much of it is like accurate yeah. and how much of it is exaggerated i've heard that um what steve mcqueen is that his name steve mcqueen yeah it's a director yes do you mean tyler perry the did tyler perry direct vice you mean adam mckay i thought you meant <laughs> I thought you were talking about Tyler Perry because he kind of... I thought you were talking about Colin Powell's character. Like, I thought you were talking about Tyler Perry because he kind of looks like Steve McQueen. (laughs) And I thought you were being immensely racist. Oh my god, no. (laughs) I just completely forgot the name of the director. No, Adam McKay. Adam Adam McKay. McKay. Yeah. I've heard that he's freaking biased. Good lord. But now my point is He's the most liberal person in Hollywood, arguably. Wow. He's (laughs) extremely liberal. Thanks for assuming I'm, like, extremely racist. Good lord. Uh, anyway, off to my freaking Nazi the thing that it does march, is I guess. That, the thing that it does is it basically blames Dick Cheney and George W. Bush, mostly Dick Cheney, on for the, the formation of ISIS. Yeah. Oh, ISIS. Um, because they claim that ISIS came out of the war in Iraq, which yeah. partially it did. <laughs> <laughs> um. But they very much, like, drive home the fact, that the, the idea that Dick Cheney basically created ISIS. Interesting. Uh, and they do it in a way that I don't think is convincing. Right. And I'm kind of just like, okay, you're kind of making this a stretch. Uh-huh. Uh, but that's mostly what it's around. It's mostly around the war in Iraq. Yeah. Uh, most of the movie. I'll probably watch it. Just it's good. I think it's definitely worth watching. Is about. Uh, it's definitely worth watching. It's a little long. Yeah. Uh especially like the beginning parts like when he's not vice president when he's just like uh when he's not Rumsfeld's like right hand guy uh when he's not the vice like under Nixon and all that oh, and Reagan the but the uh the yeah vice. it's fun it's not that. Wow. when he's not vice when he... <laughs> wow <laughs> um can I talk Brian now yes Please. you can talk good lord I was oh. giving my review of the movie <laughs> Um, I didn't see any movies this past week, but we also haven't done this for about a month. Ugh. Brian, you suck. <laughs> you suck nasty butts. I'm joking. I probably saw this um, like two or three weeks ago. Uh, I'll talk about Into the Spider-Verse. Because, Great movie. Yeah, I actually really enjoyed it a whole ton. It's so good. Um, first movie under the Marvel moniker to give me chills. So that's good stuff. That whole, when he's, um, the what's up danger scene, when he's diving off the building for the first time, taking the leap of faith. God, it's gorgeous. 
Ooh. like what's up danger yeah that's like that's what's like in the trailer danger? and it's still like just, it's, they released the clip beforehand yeah and I watched and it's still it, just even like, in the theater i'm like oh yeah like, Ooh. very good movie actually Ashley. yes it does yes it is um, it's real real good that's kind of all i have to say about it i'm thinking of writing an essay about how it's just really good um because i liked it a lot and i think i feel like a lot more movies should be taking taking risks like that i guess risks doesn't feel like the right word but it's you see like that they're trying to patent the animation style oh man that's that's some stupid bull honky <laughs> <laughs> dang it dang it i was so excited about it just being like a pure good movie experience why does everything have to suck in 2019, the year of the Lord and Savior, <coughs> Satan? It's still really good. Yeah, it's very good. But that you shouldn't be able to patent an art style. That's well, I mean, like, stupid. they haven't gotten it yet. Yeah, they shouldn't to. be able to. Stupid. Also, uh, it's, like, the best animated movie I've seen. Oh, for sure. Yeah. How many years? Uh, four, four years? Three years? Four years. Three years. Um, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I was gonna, yeah. I just couldn't remember the name of it. Um... So, okay, cool. That's what I watched. Let's move on to M3 Suggestions now. Go jingle. Or else. We're gonna make a suggestion for you today, and you better watch it or else. Cool. Welcome to the final segment of M3 Movies. This podcast, at least. Episode 28 of 29. What? No, what? I'm just, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> got any suggestions, Brian? Um... I mean, I guess I've talked about The Big Sick Yeah, a lot. I can recommend The Big Sick. The Big Sick is easily the best romantic comedy I've seen ever. Wow. No, it's not ever. But, like, since, like, the good Woody Allen ones. <laughs> um, like, it's easily, like, the best <clears throat> modern romantic comedy. Yeah. I'll say that. Um, See, it's interesting though because it doesn't really focus too much on, on the, the romance, comedy. Which is what? What? <laughs> Have you seen the big sick? Yeah. We said the opposite thing. I know. I know we did. <laughs> she's in a coma for half of it. Yeah, she's in a coma for half of it. <laughs> that's why it's about. The, that's why it doesn't. Hey, can't focus on the romance. That's why it focuses on the romance at the end. On the at the end, yeah. How can you be? How can you be? Ha ha! Funny, funny. funny. Okay, I mean. <laughs> I don't know. The movie makes a joke about how like nine eleven was a tragedy. Well, okay, I don't think I don't think men that I don't think you can say that... the movie is more of a comedy than a romance. Sure, it's more comedic than it is romantic, but yes. I don't think that you can say it's a comedy movie or it's a romantic movie. It's a romantic comedy. What do you mean? Face, what are you? I'm gonna punch you. What in are you face. saying? <laughs> I'm saying that you're a stupid dum dum who doesn't know what an open world game is, and I hate you for that. Anyway, is that all you have to say about the big scene? I mean, I was going to talk about how uh, Kumail Nanjiani and Emily V. Gordon need to write everything now. Yes. Uh, they're brilliant. And Zoe Kazan and Kumail Nanjiani and Ray Romano and Zoe, Holly Hunter. Zoe Kazan wrote um, Wildlife. Wildlife. She's, married, which she's is married to Paul Dana. Very good. I like that movie a lot. Yeah, she's married I'm to Paul surprised. Dana. Have you seen that yet? No, I haven't. I'm surprised. That movie would be right up your lane. Yeah, I know. I'm excited. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's just like the most like feel good. Like, it's just it's so fun to watch. Yeah. You know what the best joke in the Big Sick is? Uh, the nine eleven joke. It's one of them. My my <laughs> my personal favorite joke in the Big Sick is when they're talking about they're at this comedy place. Yeah, and they're talking about uh one of their friends who like uh is not as good at comedy as the rest of them. Yeah. And it's something said that said by Bo Burnham. They're like they're roasting him oh, behind yeah, his Bo back. Burnham's in that. Bo Burnham's in that movie. Um but they're like roasting him behind his back and he's he says he's like Daniel Day Lewis, except he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like he's yeah, so anti charismatic. Like <laughs> <laughs> he's like so anti charismatic. He's like Daniel Day Lewis, except he sucks. <laughs> um, oh, it's, it's, I love that joke. I'm gonna suggest a documentary, which is weird because I'm not really too huge on documentaries. It's like this one that I'm going to suggest and Won't You Be My Neighbor and probably RBG if I have seen it yet, which I haven't. Um, I'm going to suggest Jiro Germs of Sushi. 
um, which is on Netflix and Hulu if you want to watch it. It's that's a feel good movie to me because it's just focusing on this guy who makes sushi and has for like 80 years. <coughs> and it's really incredible because like he still has that passion for it and he like it's just something about seeing someone interested in the work that they do and like really be driven by it is so motivating to me. Oh my god. Huh. So, I knew I had this in my phone. Yeah. Uh, but that's a very funny coincidence. Yeah. Uh, one year ago, today, you recommended this movie. Seriously? To me, <laughs> and I made a note that's just called Jiro Dream- Dreams of Sushi. Oh, wow. In my, in my phone. Well, good for me. Yeah. I never watched it. <laughs> you should watch it. It's so good. It's, it's been so in my phone good. for exactly one year. It's, today I mean, that's the, funny there's seriously maybe it's also because i just like sushi but there's like seriously just like a five minute stretch of time that's just close-ups of him making sushi and like the course that he plans for people Sounds relaxing. and like it, it's very relaxed <laughs> it talks about like also how he serves customers how he'll like notice someone is left-handed and put the sushi on the left side of the plate that's so fascinating to me it's just so crazy. It's so cool to see a different side of life they wouldn't normally see. Ah! And movies do that. It's the magic of movies. It's the magic of movies. This guy's still kicking, too. Probably still making sushi. Although I don't I'm know. really excited to see how they portray Italians in uh, Far From Home. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think I watched... I'm curious. Probably this time last year, actually. I think I watched... Big Sick, and then Giro Dreams of Sushi. Do you think there will be, like, any Italians? Because Jenny and I watched The Big Sick and Giro Dreams of Sushi around this time last year. So, wow, very cool. Um, yeah, cool, that's my suggestion. Giro Dreams of Sushi, go watch it, very good. Uh, and this has been M3 Movies. Um, go ahead, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, at M3 Movies for both, um... You can see us do stuff there, Sometimes. which is grand. Yeah, I'm. Re- I live tweeted the Golden Globes yeah. from the account, which on was Twitter. fun. Got our most uh, likes on a tweet, fun. which was like what three? <laughs> which one was it? I don't know. Just don't any know. of them. <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna do that for the Oscars, I think. Yeah. Uh, because it was fun. And I enjoy doing that, and I usually do it on my personal Twitter. But I figure now that this exists, yeah. I'll do it on that one. Um. I might do it for the SAG Awards because I care about the SAG Awards. Nobody else does, but I do. Yeah. Um, I I want to start working on sort of buffing up our social media because I've been following yeah. short. I I did a poll the other day on the Instagram. I because I enjoyed doing my 2018 video. My Wait, top you 10. Did? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Yeah. <laughs> I I did a poll on the Instagram. That's why that's why I even logged onto it. I logged oh. onto it for the first time to do that poll, and. Uh, I asked Wait, if maybe I didn't you guys were interested in a top 10 2017 video, and it was unanimous yes. Cool. So I'm going to do that. I'll release it at some point. Was it two it, votes It also? probably won't be a Thursday video, but it'll just it'll show up at some point. I mean, you can make it and then store it for a Thursday. That also works, but I'm, God, I'm a man. I, we'll I, figure it out. I'm a man. You I need man? to please. I'm a man to please. <laughs> um... Uh, what else? But I'm also okay. going to do... I w- I'll keep doing them as long as people actually watch them. So I'll probably do, like, ways of knowing if people watch them. Yeah. <laughs> be like, this yeah. many likes. And something like also, that. I'll also be doing some And I'll keep essays. doing them. I've got some. Because those are fun. Works. Yeah. Right? Um, also, just... if there are any other list ideas, <laughs> I like doing those. So, like, Anticipated of 2019 is something I thought about doing. Yeah. Or uh, stuff like Oscar... Uh, Oscar predictions in Star Wars, you know? <laughs> I probably won't do nomination predictions because the nominations come out on Tuesday so that's yeah. probably not going to happen if I do do it it'll be on Saturday so I mean uh, we'll see you um, said do do okay <laughs> um, and yeah um, what else? <coughs> support us give us money give us your money um, go ahead go to patreon.com slash m3 movies and uh, you can get stuff from us we'll get you stuff if you give us money uh and all the money that you would send our way which would be crazy generous um and we have some donors as it is which is crazy generous of them will be going towards us uh being able to pay for a subscription service 
or not a subscription service, a um, hosting service so that we can actually be on things like SoundCloud or uh, the Apple Playlist Music Store or whatever, um, and just anywhere that you get your podcasts. Um, so any donations would be generous and greatly accepted. Also, we are um, getting... We're actually like use, getting microphones. Oh yeah, yeah. Soon. Yeah. So in theory, uh, the hopefully sound by next should week, be better. yeah, the sound quality should be you know top notch, decent. Although we still also don't have an audio engineer or sound engineer, which is whatever, because we're just two dudes on a couch. <laughs> Good times. Um, we should live stream the Oscars. Sure, that'd be fun. Yeah. Uh yeah, Patreon dot com slash M three movies. If That's, anybody's still listening and wants us to live stream the Oscars, you should yeah, tell text us. Text us. I mean, yeah, comment below. Comment. Yeah, like, like. comment, subscribe. We need subscribers so that we can grow. Um, <coughs> because fun fact, here's a fun fact for you. Right after high school, I am not going to college. Um, I am planning on letting this bad boy grow and hopefully making some money off of it at some point in the future. Um, so spread news of us. Tell about us. Tell the world our stories whatever um so yeah thanks for listening patreon.com slash m3 movies you can go to um bit.ly slash m3 site to find out more about us um and tell us to your friends that's it uh i'm jack i'm brian this has been m3 movies we love your stupid faces Bye bye <laughs>